Okay, let's talk about finding the inverse function. And this is a big topic in algebra, so you definitely need to understand this. Um, of course, if you're interested in this video, it tells me that you're studying functions and uh, more specifically, you're studying inverse functions. And this could uh, definitely be quite confusing uh, for students, but uh, it's gonna be my goal to give you some outstanding information and make you an inverse function expert if you stick around here. And we're gonna get to all that in just one second, but first, let me introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over many years, I've constructed um, a ton of online math classes. Uh, it's literally taken me over 10 years to build uh, what I think is some of the most comprehensive video-based online math help programs anywhere, okay? So I do that, or I've, I've done that. It's my passion to teach because students need a lot of math instruction. The more math instruction you get, more problems you see solved. Uh, you can, you know, it's like when you do a home, homework problem, you know, you're doing that, but all you have is an answer in the back of the book. You want to see problems being solved. That's a huge part of it, and you need great instruction. So um, if you're looking for th uh, something that does that, my Math Help program just might be for you. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. So again, uh, my focus is in middle and high school mathematics and more advanced math. All right. Um, also, hopefully you're taking good notes. If you're not, you need to uh, work on strong note-taking. I have on my YouTube channel some uh, videos on the importance of note-taking. I can just tell you right now, note-taking is critical to your success in math. So, um, but if your notes are not that desirable at this stage as you work on improving and you want to pick up a pair of mine, I'm going to leave a link to my math notes in the description of this video. So I have uh, pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, trigonometry right now, currently. Okay, so with that being said, let's get into inverse functions so the way i like to teach is to get let's you know really you know break this down so i'm, I'm just not going to give you a recipe all right like hey here do this da, 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 and you get the answer because that's not going to do anything for your understanding of what's going on all right your comprehension of the topic so <clears throat> we're talking about something not inverse but we're really we're talking about functions okay and i love functions functions are so important in math and just look at the root word of functions. They're fun, okay? They're fun. We're talking about fun stuff here. And let's take a look at functions. Now, a quick power review of functions. So in the world of mathematics, now let's kind of draw a little circle like this, okay? We have these things called relations. Relations, all right? And let's just say for um, a very simplistic uh, way of expressing this. These are like points, x, y points that we could put on a graph. Okay, so we have relations. Now, some relations, not all, some relations are functions. Okay, now, I've done a few videos, more actually more than a few, on uh, what is a function. So if you're confused on what a function is, you need to, at this stage, know what functions are. So I probably really should be linking some of these other videos. But if you go on my t uh, YouTube channel, my playlist under algebra, uh, pre-algebra, algebra one, maybe algebra two in there, you'll see plenty of videos on uh, functions. Okay, so you need to know that functions are certain type of uh, relations, okay? Now, out of the universe of functions, some of these functions, not all of these functions, have inverses and verse. Okay, so um, it's important that you understand that not everything you're going to see in mathematics is a, a function. Okay, functions have very specific uh, definitions to them, and because we do have a function, it doesn't mean that it's also going to have an inverse. So. Wow, you know, that's maybe a little bit confusing. Well, let's kind of see if we can clear this up graphically speaking. Okay, so let's look at a little XY graph. Yeah, right. Okay, so XY graph. Now, you need to understand two uh, little acronyms here, VLT and HLT. This is, this is good stuff here, right? So the VLT is something called the vertical line test. All right, let's just look at this guy right here. I'm going to get to the inverse here in a second, but it's not going to do you any good for you to understand about inverse functions if you don't understand what I'm talking about here. This is like prerequisite kind of knowledge. So here is a little graph, okay? And 
and let's say this is a graph of parabola. So my question to you is, does this graph represent a function? All right, that's the question. Is this a function? All right, we'll go like that. Okay, is it a function? Well, the way we can answer this question is by using the vertical line test, the vertical line test. So if we draw a vertical line anywhere, we, we chop it through this graph anywhere we want, just one time, we just chop it through, da, 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 da. How many times does it cross the graph? One time here, one time there, one time there. So if I draw a vertical line, and this is my vertical line test, uh, through a graph and it and it only crosses through, intercepts that graph one and only one time, then that graph uh, is a function. The graph represents a function. So this, in fact, is a function, right? Now, we'll get back to this graph here in a second. If I have this like this, okay, uh, is this a function, right? Well, if I draw a vertical line through it, it chops through it two times. Okay, so this is not a function. This fails vertical line test. So as I was saying, uh, this would this is not a function. Therefore, this is a relation. So, you know, this graph consists of the set of all these x y points. And so it's kind of what I was getting at between um, the difference between a function and a, or what the definition of a relation is. So functions are certain type of relations. Now we can look at these things graphically. Okay. All right, so let's get back to our nice little shape here. And by the way, a little pop quiz for you. What would I call this shape? Okay, well, hopefully uh, all of you blurted out, oh, that is a parabola. Well, it's an okay parabola. It's not a perfect parabola. But it is a uh, parabolic, okay, and it represents a quadratic function. So in mathematics, we're using this term functions pretty strongly. Okay, so we haven't even gotten to yet how to find the inverse function. Just hold on here. I'm going to get to it. Again, I'm giving you knowledge you need to know. All right, so let's go back here real quick. This guy here passes the vertical line test. It's indeed a function. Now, let's get to the $64,000 question, and that is, is this, does this function have an inverse? This is the notation for an inverse function. Uh, sometimes there's others, but this is the most common, okay? So does this function have an inverse function? So I told you, remember initially I said, hey, listen, just because something's a function, it doesn't guarantee you that you're going to have an inverse. So now there's like another test, right? What's that test? Well, you guessed it. It's called the horizontal line test, okay? Now, it works the same way as a vertical line test. But instead of using a vertical line, all right, you guessed it, we're going to use a horizontal line. And what do you think is going to happen? Yes, I can hear you through my YouTube channel headphones here. When I uh, uh, put the uh, horizontal line through this uh, function, this, this parabolic, this quadratic function, look what happens. Boom, it crosses twice. So it fails. Okay, this fails the horizontal line test, but what does this test even do for me? Remember, the vertical t uh, line test is to determine whether something is a function. Well, the horizontal line test determines whether this function has an inverse, okay? And this particular function does not have an inverse because it fails the horizontal line test. So you want to know these, um, these tests, okay? So if you want to know whether a function has an inverse, you can be looking at the horizontal line test. Okay, now let's take a look at the problem we're doing here. Uh, f of x equals 2x plus 1. So I'm telling you this is a function. Let's go write this up here. f of x equals 2x plus 1. Okay, something you need to know. Uh, in algebra, this function notation f of x is the same thing as y, okay? So this right here, okay, this f of x, I can write this as y equals 2x plus 1. Now, what do I, how would I describe these, okay? Well, this is a linear equation. It's the <clears throat> equation for a graph of a line. So listen to my description of this. This is a linear equation. This is a linear function, Okay, and the only thing I did was to put my function notation in there. So this is a linear function. 
This is a linear equation, okay? But it's important that you understand that uh, in algebra, okay, f of x is equal to y. Again, functions, huge topic. I can, you know, uh, we can get into this all day long. So if you're confused on functions, you need to, you know, you need to really work on your foundational knowledge about all this stuff, okay? All right, so now, you know, where am I going with this? Well, let's get back to, to our problem. Okay, we're looking at this function, f of x equals 2x plus 1, which is the same as this equation, y equals 2x plus 1. Okay, now the reason why I'm, I'm stressing this is because I want, I want to look at the graph. Okay, y equals 2x plus 1. So how do I graph that? There's a 1 right there, right? So that's the y-intercept. And of course, I know uh, you guys out there being great math students would know how to graph this. So my slope is 2, so I go up 2 over 1. All right, I'm just kind of sketching this real quick. Whoops. Yeah, there, that's good enough. Okay. So this is the graph of y equals 2x uh, plus 1, or the function f of x equals 2x plus 1. Same thing. All right. Now, let's just look at it. Okay, does, is, in fact, can we verify validly graphically that this is a function? Yes, we can, because we can just drop in that vertical line test, no problem. Boom, it passes the vertical line test. Anywhere I chop a vertical line test, a vertical line through this line, it's going to go across the line one time, right? Now, how about the horizontal line test? Yeah, it's looking pretty good with the horizontal line as well, right? Any horizontal line is only going to cross through here no more than one time. So it passes a horizontal line test. So yay, we are happy. And now we're like, all right, awesome. This thing does have an inverse. Okay, so now that's great, right? <laughs> now, how do we go find it? Okay, so now we're ready for um, the inverse, okay? So there's a, more, a little bit more I want to tell you about just the concepts of a function and inverse, but let's just first get you to find the inverse. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. All right, to find the inverse function, this f with this f of x you're going to replace with the y. Okay? So it's going to be y equals 2x plus 1. That's step step 1 is to replace the f of x with the y. Okay? Give myself some more room here. Okay, step 2 step 2 is to switch the x and y. Okay? So step two is to switch x and y. So here I have a y, I'm going to put an x, okay, where the y is at. And then here where the x is at, I'm going to put a y, all right? That's step two. And step three is to solve for y, okay? So let's talk about how to solve for y. Now, um, we have x is equal to 2y plus 1, but we can rewrite this as 2y plus 1 is equal to x. The, le the left is equal to the right, right is equal to left. doesn't make a difference. I like to write this way because I'm solving for y, so I want to have the y on the left-hand side. So let's subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. I have 2y is equal to x minus 1. And when I go down here, I can divide everything by 2. Okay, so I have y is equal to 1 half x minus 1 half. All right, so I solved for y. Guess what? At the end of that, that is in fact, when you solve for y, this is the inverse, okay? So I could just write this as f of negative 1 of x is equal to 1 half x minus 1 half. All right, that's it. We did it, okay? So that is a quick steps, one, two, three. Okay, one, you want to replace the f of x with y, switch x and y, and then solve for y, and there you go. Let's talk a little bit more about functions and their inverse. I don't want to make this video too long um, uh, because there's a lot uh, in this. Now, you should know about domain and range, okay? Domain and range. So let's say a function has uh, its domain is 1, 2, 3, and the range, let's say, is 5, 6, and 9. Now, if you don't know what I'm doing here, okay, you should, um, 
you know, uh, you should need to study functions more. Okay. So in other words, one is going to map to five, two maps to six and three maps to nine. So if I gave you these set of numbers, okay, if I said, do these numbers here, do this, does this set right here represent a function? All right. Well, you could just plug them into this mapping. Okay. And, uh, you say, okay, uh, no X is going to more, it's going, the, an X is only going to one and only one Y value. Okay. This is X, this is Y, etc. Okay. So this is a function. Let's call this some function F of X. So indeed it's a function. All right. Now, what would be its inverse function? So this would pass the horizontal line test. The inverse, when you have a function and it's inverse, here's what ends up happening. It's really cool. Okay. Let's uh, do the domain and range. So, so here's the function. Okay. And its inverse function, if you're asked to find it this way, what we do is we, we, uh, the range becomes the domain. Mm -hmm. Five, six, nine. And the domain becomes the range of the inverse. Okay. So five goes to one, six goes to two, nine goes to three. Right. So when you have a function, the inverse, the domain or ranges are switched. Okay. Also, you could see this algebraically because when you plug in, you do a composite function, you plug in the inverse into the function or the function into the inverse, all right, it looks like this, and it's kind of crazy looking, you'll get X, all right? So here's some additional things that you need to be able to do when it comes to uh, inverse functions. Now, I don't want to make this video longer than it already is. All right, I told you in advance, this is a big topic. Um, so, you know, my... My math teacher in me, my inner math teacher is like, oh, I know you need more information. I need to keep going, keep going. But that's what these uh, videos are designed for. They're, you know, they're, these are, uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to give you nice, effective, quick um, tutorials so you can learn this stuff, improve in it. But, you know, but it's no substitute for complete full instruction and, you know, total, you know, excellence in this topic. And you can see there's a lot more that goes into inverse functions that I really didn't uh, finish uh, throughout this video. So I'm going to leave you with a couple recommendations. One, subscribe to my YouTube channel as I'm posting stuff all the time, and I'm sure I'll do more videos on inverse functions. Already I have stuff on my, um, I have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel uh, organized in various playlists, so you can probably find some more um, videos on functions there. I'm certain of it. Okay, so you need to strengthen your knowledge of uh, functions and inverse stuff. So you, but if you like my teaching style, you can go there, right? Um, also, again, my math help program, that's where my complete full instruction, tons of problems there. I would recommend uh, at least my algebra course or beyond, okay? Anything more advanced than algebra that gets into uh, inverse functions. If you really, really want to uh, learn this stuff. Um, so, uh, you know, those are two recommendations, but here's the thing. If you don't practice this, you're not really going to retain it. Okay. You got to practice it. It's good that you, maybe you, this video helps you out and you're like, Oh, okay, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. But you got to like practice it so you can retain it. All right. These are complicated concepts. There's nothing, you know, trivial about this. Okay. Um, and, uh, again, you know, if it helps you out, that's excellent. So please consider smashing that like button again. Hopefully you, uh, will become a subscriber and um, definitely, you know, I'm here to help you. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.